This is the Nixplay Iris. It's an eight inch Wi-Fi cloud-based enabled digital frame. Before this review gets rolling, I was just wrapping up the edit and realized there's something really cool that we can do together with this frame. Stay tuned to the end so you can help me out. As I said, this is the Nixplay Iris. It's their eight inch cloud-based Wi-Fi enabled digital frame. It cost about $200 on Amazon and they sent it to me about two weeks ago for review. It's been sitting here playing pictures ever since. And I've got some uh, unboxing and kind of some rambling thoughts. I'm gonna share some of that with you and then we'll come back and do kind of a wrap up final thoughts, whether or not this is worth your time and money. As photographers, one of the best things we can do with our work is print them and display them in your house, your family's house, and your friends' houses. I mean, there's nothing better than seeing your work on the walls. But I think there's a lot of things that hold you back from printing your work. Time, energy, worry about getting it right, the cost. All that adds up and it's a little bit of friction. Even me, who is a supposed expert. I mean, yeah, I got some pictures on the wall back here from a trip a year ago. I really love them. It's fun reminders of that trip. Since then, I've been to a lot of fantastic places and I haven't printed a single picture from any of those. Now, uh, I use the excuse I get fairly busy, but honestly, a lot of the same things that you all use as excuses is mine too. Oh, you know, I don't know if that's good enough for printing or where would we put that one? And so you just kind of end up not printing. But I have so many pictures that I love seeing that really right now only live on my Instagram feed. That's like the one place I go back to look and scroll through my pictures. And it's usually when I go back to find an older picture to share with somebody that I'm like, oh, look at that awesome picture. Look at that awesome picture. So the idea of having a digital picture frame in your house that is rotating through some group of pictures and I was just using the example of all these different trips, but I mean, friends and family, pictures of my kids as they're growing up, I love seeing that. I love the kind of reminders that you get occasionally in Facebook, and for me, mostly in Google Photos of, here's what you were doing seven years ago, eight years ago, and most of that is pictures of my kids and when they were adorable. Now they're, they're cute, but they're not adorable anymore. So I love to see those pictures. And the idea of one of these is great, and I feel like these were popular a couple of years ago. And then I really felt like I haven't heard anybody talking about them. I haven't ended up in anybody's houses that have one. But this caught my eye. It's the Nixplay Iris, as I said. It's about $200 on Amazon, and it has fantastic reviews. Now, fantastic reviews on Amazon doesn't always translate to fantastic use in the real world. But I just unboxed it, set it here on the table, plugged it in, I'm curious to see what the setup is like and then how easy it is to get some pictures on because I think in the past that has been the friction for some of them. It's not as much of friction as printing, but it certainly is a little bit of a pain in the past to get some pictures on. This one is supposed to support a bunch of different options for getting your pictures on, so I'm curious to try that. So let's walk through the setup right now. It tells me that we're welcome, getting started. It comes with this little hockey puck. It's got this kind of little soft rubberized in the background. The frame actually has that too. And the power cord in the back doubles as the kind of frame stand that keeps it upright. So I am supposed to press that button to continue. Press that button to continue. Press that button to continue. Okay, once I figured out that you, this is a little classic TV infrared remote that you need to actually point at the port on the side, it became much more responsive. So that's a better uh, experience. And now it is checking for software updates. I grabbed my laptop, logged into my Nixplay account, which I had created through the app. That was all quite easy. And now I'm able to connect Google Photos, Instagram, Dropbox, Flickr. And I think, excuse my turning around here, I think I can just pick an album from my Google Play. You have to 
create a playlist here, and then drag all of these albums it found into that created playlist over there. As you get close, you start to see the pixels. As I, you know, we're we're used to these very high resolution small screens now, and it's it's not quite at that level. But I am picky about the display of my pictures, and they certainly look a lot nicer on here than they do on Facebook, which that's not really saying that much. Um, what happens if we click something like the down button? Do we know what the down and up do? Fit to screen. Oh, with a black instead. Okay, so you can cycle through. Fit to screen or the black, jump cut. Okay, so that's nice. I like that. <clears throat> Top right corner, we have something that looks like shows us multiple playlists, maybe. That text, can you identify, is from my Instagram stories. Don't be confused by that. This button doesn't seem to do anything right now. So we'll ignore that. But how about the gear icon? Okay, the gear icon brings up this nice little settings, whether or not it should play back all of the photos, how it should shuffle them, what it should do as far as fitting to the screen or the um, display, and the type of, I like this, the transition type. I really don't like that slice in. I, so I would just do a simple reveal I think a simple reveal would be my pick for the type of transition it does. Transition time, whether or not it has a clock. Let's turn towards you all. If you want a caption shown with that, it might be nice again. If you think about this, I didn't mention this. Uh, obviously, a great present for moms, for grandmoms, because if you set this up and then you can send pictures to it, especially directly from your phone, you're off. It's kind of like an instant digital postcard. Plus, of course, all of those other pictures that you load on there that kind of cycle through. So it's good. Why did these fall out of favor? I'm not really sure. Do you know anybody that has them in their house? I'd love. Leave a comment right down below. Let me know. Have you tried any of them? Have you tried this Irix Mix Play? I have to say I'm pretty happy with it. I'm going to set it over here for a week or so and see what it does. I'm going to spend a little bit of time kind of curating and getting some of my favorite pictures on here. So a couple of things have happened why it's been sitting here that really increased my enjoyment of it. Uh, one, it is very easy to use. It is incredibly easy to connect to with your phone or your computer and move pictures over. And in fact, one of the things that really made me like it is, you know, just doing a day trip while the kids were on spring break. I had the app out on the ferry, took a few photos. While I was on the ferry, sent them to the frame. Took me literally less than 30 seconds. We walk in the door, and a few minutes later, one of the pictures from our day trip happened to be up, and my 11-year-old Henry was like, hey, we were, that's how, he was pretty impressed. Now the novelty of that is gonna wear off over time, but think about this being in somebody's house, like your mom. Mother's Day is coming up. And, you know, certainly you can send her text picture, pictures um, of your adventures as a family out and about. But then later you're going to ask her, you know, your kid's got a weird bump on his forehead. What does your mom think about that? Or that recipe for mac and cheese or her amazing black beans. And that picture is going to disappear into the bowels of her text messages and not really be something that she sees anymore. But if this is sitting at her house and you go out on an adventure and you send four, five, six pictures to it, they're going to come up again and again and again. And slowly over time, you're just going to add more pictures to them and there'll just be more pictures on here. It supports up to a thousand pictures in a single play set or playlist. It's pretty impressive. So that was one of the things that I really liked about it, how easy it was to put pictures on it, how easy it was while you're out there somewhere else to put pictures on it. Another thing that happened. Um, my dad passed away a couple of years ago. I have a couple of pictures of him on this frame and my 11 year old, whose memory of him is, you know, a little fuzzy because he was young, uh, saw, said, hey, there's grandpa and ran over to see the picture closer. And I realized, you know, I have a, a picture or two of my dad up around the house, but not too many because, well, I don't know. You don't want somebody to walk in and be like, did I just walk into a shrine? 
No. But you can have lots of pictures on the frame. And it keeps it in people's memory. And as I, I kind of already mentioned this, but it is so easy to get pictures on here, either from your phone or in their website where you can just drag and drop, connect it to Dropbox, Google Docs, Google Photos, uh, Facebook, and it's all really easy. A beta feature that's you know, recently announced and I'm testing right now is that you can automatically connect it to a Dropbox and it will stay synced with that folder. So I throw all of my Instagram pictures in a Dropbox folder. That means that without thinking about it, as I publish Instagram pictures, they'll automatically show up on the frame. I don't have to do anything else. I simply export them from Lightroom like I usually do, and they'll show up on the frame in a few minutes. That's pretty snazzy. Now I will say two downsides that I don't like. These are pretty minor. One is that API connection to Google Photos is slow, kind of painfully slow. That's why I'm talking about it. My recommendation to you is if you use Google Photos and you want to move stuff from Google Photos to the frame, make a nice album in Google Photos with that group of images, then connect it. You'll wait a little bit, but it's much better than trying to find images within their interface. And then you just move that over to the frame and publish it. And the other bummer is, well, if you really care about your, how your work is displayed and you're watching a photography channel, I imagine you're fairly picky about it, the black bars are annoying. You know, you can set this up as a landscape or a portrait orientation. It will rotate automatically. And, but if you've got a lot of landscapes and a few portraits, then you're gonna have the black bars. You can ask it to do other background features like a, a soft kind of blur, or uh, fit to fill the frame, but that of course has its own problems as people will get their heads cut off. So, you know, it's not perfect. I think you should choose one or the other, and if you really care, size your pictures to the aspect ratio. I think that'll make them look a little bit nicer. Overall though, I've been really happy with this. And I don't know if I showed this in the kind of ramblings and musings, I wondered, it has a speaker, it talked to me to help me set it up, uh, but, no videos, I can't move any videos over. I've read on their website that this is a feature that is coming soon, so videos will be here. I'm not sure how I'd feel personally about that. You certainly could put them in a separate playlist. I wouldn't want to be watching a movie and all of a sudden my frame talking to me. But talking about talking to frames or it talking to you, there's actually an Alexa skill. Alexa, ask my frame to play the logos playlist. I just had a little playlist called Logos with some of the Photorec TV logos in there. And that's it. Alexa, ask my frame to show the family playlist. Show my playlist. Family on the frame. It's pretty sweet. So, you know, really quite customizable, easy. I love it. $200. Quality is good. I've got no real complaints. I'd love to know your thoughts. You can leave those right down below in the comments. And if you plan to pick this one of these up for Mother's Day, which is pretty soon, there's a link to Amazon right down below. And of course, your use of that link greatly helps what we do here at Photorec.tv, and I appreciate it. And if you're not already a subscriber, you might want to hit that subscribe button and the little bell notification to be notified of future gear reviews, tips, tricks, travel videos, and so much more. Thanks so much for watching. Bye-bye. I realize that this frame has an email address. You can send pictures directly to it. I want to see your beautiful photos, your landscapes, your portraits, right here in my living room. Fun, exciting photos that I see. I'll give a shout out on my Instagram stories. This email address right there. Yeah, I just gave you the email address to the frame. We'll see how that goes. So it's just you.